considered the you know, the man and heavyweight just the other weekend, whoever it might be. Yeah. How do you feel? What's your take on that? And if you're in the situation, do you see where you're coming from? No. No. Remember, like, it's, it's his decision to not box. No one forced him not to box. It was his decision. He had two rematches scheduled with Klitschko. He didn't, he didn't take the fights. He's been active, inactive for two and a half years. Should the whole boxing industry stop and wait for him? Um, he hasn't addressed the situations properly. You know, what can we do about that situation? I'm not going to stop my career. I'm going to keep on rocking and rolling. Um, remember, people forget that before before like the Klitschko fight, Fury wasn't really regarded as an exciting fighter or the man of boxing. His talking has gained him the respect recently, and the adversities his face has gained him a lot more attention than his boxing style. He even struggled to sell out the Manchester Arena when he fought Klitschko. So you can't forget when you talk about I have to beat the man. I don't really think he is. Is there a desire though, to fight? Do I? Is there a desire? If there wasn't a desire to fight anyone, I would have packed it up now. What well, a fury in particular? Is it, they're all the same. They're all just compares, honestly. There's not more than another. They're all the same. Um, not so much fury anymore because I'm, I'm quite, I'm a bit bored of the talking. I just want to see him get back in action. And sometimes I say the right thing and I say I'm looking forward to him getting back. And other times I just say I can't be bothered because it's just an ongoing situation. So. For me, when I when I won the championship belt, I stayed active and carried on progressing, and he didn't. So it's, it's a shame because these were like his glory days now. So I hope he gets himself together because we stay consistent, and he hasn't. You don't know. You don't know, do you? You don't know. He's still young. Um, but he's been pro. When did, when did he turn pro? Two thousand and nine. What's that now? Nine years? He's been pro nine years? It's a long time. It's a long time. Um, you know, to put your body through the sparring, the fights, the training camps, the running. Maybe that's why his body is going through what it's going through. It's a long time to be fighting. So um, you just don't know. But when you work out the facts, it's a long time to be <coughs> fighting for. Anthony, um, a lot of talk in there about strength and weaknesses, both mentally and physically. But what do you think is going to be the biggest difference against the ring? Um, like balance, relaxation, being able to do with all styles, I think. Uh, and who, who watches boxing more, I think? Who studies the game more? But like I said, I think like what made some of my fights entertaining is my lack of experience. So in places where I had strengths, I lacked in other places, which kind of made up for like, you know when you get hit with a big shot and someone's like, Phew, that's entertaining for some people, but for me, I'm like, fuck, my left hand was low. Um, so I think whoever studies the game more and brushes up on their skills and their weaknesses will come out victorious, really. And then you haven't seen a fight three of the belts this year. Um, four. Sorry, four of the belts, sorry, I'm saying. Uh, what did it mean to you, like, personally, to... Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. What did it mean to you personally to, like, have that against your name? Uh, it is good. It is good, it is good, it is good. It is good. It is good. Like with me, I'm like, you've got two ends of it. It is what it is. You know, I just enjoy it. But then on, on the other side, you can't take away from how great that, that achievement is. Do you know where I'm coming from? Um, it's good because I'm still active. I still train at my local amateur gym. I train with all the Olympians. It's real grassroots stuff. So, like, for what's the biggest prize in sport? Not just boxing. They say that to win that title is the biggest prize in sport. To win that and to be so close to people who are trying to be boxers just to keep fit. It's a great achievement. So on the one side, it's, it is what it is because I'm around like my local people and that. But on the other side of things, it's one of the best achievements anyone could achieve in sport. So it's good. It's a good balance, I think. It just balances it out. And just finally, um, talk about trash talking. Um, you talk about having a lot of respect for, for opponents and stuff. Do you think trash talking still has a place in boxing and, and should be carried forward? Or do you think it should be? It definitely does have its place in boxing, I, but I think it's good when it's when it's natural. If that's who you are, that's who you are. You know, I don't think you should use it as a tool to sell a fight. I've always found it interesting that people can hate each other before and then after the fight they're hugging each other, loving each other, and oh, he was great. 
and before you're saying how shit he is and you're going to knock his block off. I, don't, I just never really understood that. So I think if you don't like the person, like me and Dylan, we still ain't shook hands. We don't, we don't shake hands. And I didn't shake his hand after he didn't shake mine because that was a real revenge fight. And Klitschko was a lot of respect. And I do respect him till this day. And it's just a natural type of thing that you have with your opponent. So I would never put on an act to try and sell a fight. There's no need for that. That's like PR, promoting, my training, my achievements. That all speaks enough volumes than me having to go down there and like belittle someone to kind of boost the profile of the fight, I think.